Another fun episode of the Celestial Toymaker, a first Doctor serial, although, as I inferred in the previous episode, the retrospective, there will not, there isn't much William Hartnell in episode 2, nor will there be in episode 3, due to his absence in this. He was on holiday, and the Doctor, he has pre-recorded lines and he's invisible for this particular episode. It's mostly Stephen and Dodo up against these um, real-life well, not really, it's the, the Celestial Toy Makers illusions, but these, like, playing card figures come to life. It's very odd. I decided that it might be interesting to read about what else has been done for the Celestial Toy Maker within the Doctor Who uh, expanded universe of um, inane and sometimes silly adventures. <laughs> Let's hear about this. Okay, so for Celestial Toy Maker, he's a fictional character in the long-running British science fiction television series Doctor Who, he was played by... Michael Gotham featured in the 1966 story for Celestial Toymaker by Brian Hales. The Toymaker is immortal, having already lived for millions of years. Having been cast out from an alternate universe, he obeys a different set of physical laws. The years of isolation have driven him mad, and he seeks distraction in the playing of games. If the Toymaker loses a game, his world is destroyed, although he is powerful enough to rebuild it. If a contestant loses, he is added to the game as a toy, and if he wins, he is destroyed with the world. Either way, the contestant cannot win. The reward for both failure and success is the same. Eternal existence at the Toymaker's side. The Toymaker is manipulative and can turn people, as the First Doctor comments into his playthings. As he demonstrates, he is a being of great power, judging from how he effortlessly makes the Doctor invisible and, for a while, mute, conveniently for Hartnell's holiday. He uses his enormous power for self-satisfaction and bullying, such as threatening to break Sergeant Rugg and Mrs. Wiggs like a stack of plates. The Toymaker appears in the novelization of the unmade serial The Nightmare Fair by Graham Williams in a story set in Blackpool. The Sixth Doctor and Perry defeat the Toymaker and leave him sealed inside a force field maintained by his own thoughts, trapped for the remainder of his life. The Toymaker made his first comic strip appearance in 1981 in a backup strip titled The Greatest Gamble, written by John Peel and drawn by Mike McMahon, and first published in Doctor Who magazine number 56. In the story, the Toymaker plays a game of cards against a gambler named Gaylord Lefebvre on a Mississippi riverboat in the late 19th century. The Toymaker then appeared in the Doctor Who magazine comic strip Endgame, written by Alan Barnes and published in DWM number 244 to number 247. In Endgame, he took the entire town of Stockbridge as, he, as his playing board to try to defeat the Eighth Doctor using the ultimate weapon of a mirror, which created clockwork duplicates. However, the Doctor turned this plan on its executor, creating a duplicate of the Toymaker hell-bent on playing games forever, at which point he was cast into a dimensional void. The Toymaker next featured in the past Doctor Adventures novel Divided Loyalties by Gary Russell. Divided Loyalties reveals that he encountered the Doctor prior to the events of the Celestial Toymaker, where he possessed the body of the Doctor's school friend Rallon to use as a permanent host. This story also reveals that the Toymaker is one of the Guardians, representing dreams in the same way as the White Guardian represents order and the Black Guardian represents chaos. The story also features Gaylord Lefebvre from The Greatest Gamble. At the conclusion of the story, despite the Toymaker's attempts to turn the Fifth Doctor's companions against him, he is defeated when Rallon expels the Toymaker from his body by triggering all twelve of his regenerations at once, the Toymaker subsequently being possessed by Rallon's Watcher to keep him in check in future hence accounting for the Toymaker's difficult personality during his different personality during his appearance in the Nightmare Fair, with Rallon's Watcher now his host rather than Rallon himself. It is as though the Toymaker himself has regenerated, changing minor but crucial aspects of his personality. Okay, that's needlessly convoluted. That's Doctor Who trying to make a consistent canon in the, within its expanded universe, though, for you. The cancelled story The Nightmare Fair was resurrected by Big Finish Productions, and released in November 2009, Colin Baker and Nicola Bryant returned as the Doctor and Perry, but as Michael Goff had retired, the part of the toy maker was played by David Bailey, who had previously played Dask in the 1977 story The Robots of Death. However, seven months before Fair's release, the toy maker makes a surprise appearance against the seventh Doctor in the audio story The Magic Mousetrap, his power having been divided among the, his last group of opponents when the Doctor manipulated him into playing multiple games at once. In this story, the toy maker is played by Paul Anthony Barber. David Bailey returns to the role in the Eighth Doctor and Charlie Pollard Companion Chronicles audio story, Solitaire. And that's all for today. Tune in next time if you're so inclined to AOD's classic Doctor Who retrospective 
of the Celestial Toy Maker Part 3. Thanks again, my friends.